So today we will be starting with our app identification, that is app ID feature in Palo Alto Firewalls. So let me quickly open Rack and just turn on the device to see. Let's cover theory first, then we will be covering it in practical. It will be the best way for understanding. Okay, till the time machines boots up. So let us discuss theoretical aspect. Okay, so uh, app ID as the name says, app ID is basically which application your traffic is using. So there are predefined categories at the same time Palo Alto provides you an option of customizing or creating all new application that may that you may be using in your infrastructure so i have been through multiple uh, multiple applications like that so one of that was like jira application so jira is basically you know well known global application but few organizations they require custom uh, you know customization is always there so sometimes that application uh, has different set of parameters um, which is different from altogether uh, predefined right likewise you have a um, database replication like you want to replicate your data from your cloud to your um, data centers like from cloud if you want to take a regular backup on your data centers or your local storage that also uh, uh, provides like a few company develop their own applications for that and they sell those applications to the clients likewise there are multiple applications that are being used by organizations sometimes for UAT purpose sometime for stress testing penetration testing so there are sort of you know you can say uh, <clears throat> many applications um, that you might get chance in your organization to create a custom signature or custom uh, application um, and wh why do we create custom application this is one of the questions that you'll be asking after we will be covering our app id and we will address this question afterwards so as if now yes Palo Alto provides you creating custom application with the custom ports and many more things Okay, so let's start with our slide, what, what we have uh, mentioned in our slide. So App ID provides the ability to identify application and application functions. App ID is a core function of Palo Alto network devices. App ID uses various methods to determine what exactly is running in the session. Protocol recorder, protocol decryption, application signature, heuristics are used when the above method cannot identify the application so this is last point heuristics so yesterday i i uh, shared one um, wikipedia link from where you can get an overview about heuristic so heuristic are used when the above me methods cannot identify the application this is the method by which applications such as the proprietary encrypted bit torrent and ultra surf are identified so these are the type of encrypted uh, traffic which uh, which uses heuristic you can say these are the examples uh, that utilizes heuristic search then we have uh, app id even work in these scenarios so these all are the scenarios where app id works if the application is running on a different port than expected if the application is being transmitted in an ssl tunnel then if application is going through an HTTP proxy. So uh, covering last four points in more detail. So what exactly it means? Uh, yesterday we, we talked about application override method where I told you like if this is the source, this is the destination. And if any application is using any custom port, right? So in that I defined one port 18,880 where I utilized the predefined application with the name SSL. If you guys remember from yesterday, or if you don't remember, just check the recording, you'll find it there. 
okay so what exactly it means it means like if application is using some other port that is not well known for that particular type of traffic then also your app id feature will work okay second thing if your traffic is an uh, is tunneled or you you can say if it has uh, you can say if traffic is getting channelized in different application identification then also your app id feature works yesterday we talked about facebook and un under the facebook we covered multiple things for example facebook chat facebook home uh, not home facebook video facebook um, games and many and many more things right <clears throat> so that is about your ssl encrypted traffic okay so under the ssl encrypted traffic also your app id feature works right so um, covering that point if the application is going through an http proxy so if your application is being proxied by other device then also your application identification takes place and all together your palo alto firewall is also capable of doing ssl decryption or you can say http proxy or https proxy right so i would like to ask one question here okay now we have covered uh, three four classes of our palo alto now it is my turn to uh, to ask you a question is there possibility to have udp traffic encrypted or we always get tcp encrypted yeah okay great so uh, this is a slide that i was reading through so i'm going it again okay so app id is a patent so uh, it it it's all shared with you you can go through this slide just to give you an overview so there are multiple factors that uses identification of application okay so what all methods that we use for that particular thing we have covered here port protocol evasive characteristic or application now uh, talking about uh, this we will cover in our palo alto firewall mm, this also this also this also okay so this is what we will not be covering in our uh, palo alto gui access right so as if now when an application arrives when an application arrives what it do it checks do we have any policy check or not after checking the policy if we have any allowed we have not specified any application rather we are saying any traffic for any application okay it will directly go to report and enforce policy if we have any specialized application allowed for example ssl ssh or any other thing <clears throat> in that case what it will do it will check the application signatures after checking application signatures what it will do it will check the policy check and this policy check it means application override policy okay this is about security policy this is application override policy <clears throat> if we have application override policy check then in that case there are three known scenarios for that first known scenario is where protocol decoders are very well known okay so what does it mean it means like the behavior of application is known okay so what it will do it will decode that particular application then it will check the signature after checking in signature it will check do we have any application override policy or not for that particular traffic like yesterday we configured a policy with port 18880 so what we were doing we were opening the application decoding the application checking its signature after that we check whether this particular policy has override policy or not okay now uh, remember one thing it is never recommend to use application override policy in production environment because that creates a loop uh, a loophole in your security okay so what is recommend we will talk about it today right but just for the sake of information we should know so that's why we covered yesterday
then we have a policy check then again it will go to decode if it is required if there is tunneled SSL traffic so this is the first scenario now talking about second scenario if the traffic is identified and decoding is not required for example if you have known traffic for example Facebook Google or any other platform then in that case what we can do we can uh, we can directly uh, call that particular application in the security profile okay so from there it will identify and it will fetch the required information okay so this is a second scenario but talking about third scenario that we covered yesterday as well so today we are covering it in more detail now what exactly it is doing whenever we have an application okay I'm just giving you an example if we have an application and its behavior keeps on changing right so how your Palo Alto will come to know that this particular application is genuine okay let me give you an example for that you have dot zip file so I'm giving you an example of file type I'm not giving you an example of uh, application type remember I'm giving you an example of file type not the application type but from file type you'll get a understanding now what exactly I'm doing I have a zip file now in that zip file what I have done I have placed one PDF file and in that PDF file I have uh, I have put a code which executes one exe file embedded into the PDF okay so whenever my PDF will uh, my PDF file will open that PDF file will automatically execute that exe file present in that PDF so I guess we are clear that like we can uh, we can uh, put exe file into the PDF file or dot bat file into the PDF file I think we are clear with that okay I'm assuming that so when a PDF gets executed and my Adobe Acrobat will start reading that PDF file what it will do it will identify the behavior of the file and interestingly when my PDF file will get executed and Acrobat will try to open that file at the same time that code that I'm talking about that script it will start execution in the back end and it will execute one exe or one uh, executable file in the back end so what exactly it is doing it is changing the behavior of application right and that changing of behavior is something uh, what we say is changing its signatures right so when signature gets changing then obviously the result will also get change so that change in signature that change in behavior is checked by heuristics search okay so yesterday we talked about heuristic search so taking a flow in a flow heuristic search the application behavior all the way from starting of the execution of file till your last result and if it find that your application behavior is getting changed it will uh, it will directly give a warning it will directly either block it or it will show you a warning so two types of behavior are there so this is what uh, when we talk about file blocking part or file inspection part so this is what what we didn't discuss this is applicable to the file type not the application type okay so for file type this particular solution that we discuss it is known as sandboxing okay but same thing if you want to apply on application level okay that is known as apply heuristics are we clear if we have any doubt just let me know here itself uh okay. Ajay if you can actually repeat it once again right sandboxing I understood that you're actually running a file in a in a closed environment uh, mm -hmm. but I'm not clear about the heuristics what what exactly is that 
okay so i'm just talking about the phenomena the phenomena that we are using in sandboxing is we are checking the behavior of file after executing it into a dummy environment just right. to check whether that particular file is behaving as it is uh, standardized to okay so there are few standards like pdf file is when we open pdf file this is the standard behavior of the file and this is how output should look alike but if it is getting its behavior change that particular uh, change in behavior is identified by your sandbox and likewise behavior if that phenomena that sandboxing phenomena if we apply that phenomena at application level okay so we call, in spite of calling it sandboxing we call it heuristics right when you say applying it at the application level means like you're not running it in a closed environment but you're just checking the application maybe based on so application uh, means see remember one thing so application means now uh, when we talk about layer 6 traffic or l6 traffic what exactly it contains what exactly it contains it contains your application let me give you one example let me give you one example okay uh, for understanding purpose now you have a data okay you have a data in dot html format i'm taking an example of dot html format okay you right click on that particular file and you select open with notepad okay and your file gets open into your notepad and the notepad is the application which is helping you in decoding that data and reading it into the understandable format are we on same page now are All you right. getting me so layer 6 basically of your osi model layer 6 is providing you extra uh, you can say extra uh, extra support in opening or in uh, in execution of that particular file okay whereas layer 7 is all about content now let me give you one more example now you have one file dot pdf okay and i have windows operating system running running with me and i shared that file with you where you are running macintosh okay and you are not using adobe acrobat reader for executing or opening your pdf so you are using your google chrome or some any other tool that are available in macintosh okay, okay. but but what exactly your uh, last goal your goal is to read that particular file in the most understandable format right so what exactly it means it means layer 6 is helping you in opening that particular file type okay